Hallelujah. I bless the Lord for this yet another opportunity that I have been given to minister the word of God. Hallelujah. Uh, I believe when God creates a man, there is something that is more than life that God has given upon a man's life. And that is purpose. Therefore, as we do certain things as this, we are fulfilling the purpose by which God has brought us into the face of the earth. Hallelujah. And therefore today, uh, allow me to share the word of God or to bring to you the gospel by the topic invoking divine masses. Bwana Sifiwe, invoking divine masses. Amen. I believe that God is going to bless us in a mighty way in the name of Jesus. And allow me to begin by saying that uh, one of the greatest things that sustains our living upon the face of the earth are the masses of God. Because we are men, we are human beings, we were created in the nature of the flesh. And the nature of the flesh is what is the part that makes the body to become defiled. Because every time a man fails to walk in the things of the spirit, and a man walks in the way of the flesh, the Bible says that the spirit and the flesh can never intertwine. They can never go together. So it simply means as, as, as sure as we were not born in the nature of the spirit. We were born in the nature of the flesh. It is certain that there is a dimension that uh, 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 there is a dimension of God that we are not yet guaranteed unless God shows us something else that is able to give us access to that dimension of him. And therefore, I believe it is by the masses of God. Everything that we do, everything that we receive, whatever heaven has given unto us, whatever that we are granted from heaven, that which we enjoy, that good life that we enjoy, that grace, that uh, oil that uh, God has released upon us, I believe it is a, 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 a dimension of God which today we are calling the masses of God. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, and therefore, I want us to read from the book of uh, Romans. I want to begin from the book of Romans chapter number 3, verses number 23. And the Bible says, For all men have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, the glory, and the Bible continues to say, The glory which God bestows and he receives. That is from the Amplified Version. For all men have sinned and all men have fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, brothers and sisters, I want us to understand that as a result of sin, men have fallen short of the glory of God. Now, it will take something else for the glory of God to be restored upon a man. There is something in God that it takes for a man to come back to God. There is a dimension of God. It is a place within God that a man must enter. Why? Because all men have sinned and all men have fallen short of the glory of God. Therefore, if God does not intervene, men will remain separated from the glory of God. Hallelujah. And therefore, I want us to understand that there is sin and there is the falling short of the glory of God. And the Bible talks about this glory that the Bible talks about. It is the glory that God bestows upon men. And it is the same, same glory that God desires from men. Hallelujah. Therefore, it is the desire of God that every man must carry his glory. Because it is when a man carries the glory of God that he is able to glorify God. It is when a man carries a blessing which is a, 
a dimension of God manifesting or glorifying himself in a man. That a man is able to glorify God. It is uh, when a man carries a favor, uh, which is a dimension of God glorifying himself within the life of a man, that a man is able to give glory unto God. God will have to give you something, and the something that God will give you, he will expect one thing, he will expect glory to be back to him. And therefore we need to understand that because of man's wicked nature, we are denied access. If, if, if God never uh, intervened uh, in the, in the, uh, when it comes to his dealing with men, we, uh, if, if, if he is a God that would only rest on the dimension of because men have sinned against me, then I remain separated from men. If that is the place of God, then man would forever remain separated from the things of God. You need God for you to attain the things of God. You will need God for you to access the things of God. Remember, Jesus said that you cannot enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless you first bind the strong man. Now, brothers and sisters, allow me to submit to you that I'm not talking about God as a strong man with the things of darkness. Jesus was referring to the things of darkness. But Jesus was relating to a certain principle in the kingdom that you cannot enter the house of a strong man. You cannot enter the house of God unless you, you are first of all dealt with God. You cannot prevail in the things of God until you are first of all dealt with God. And you cannot uh, experience God until you are first of all and uh, have an encounter with God. God must deal with your life. If at all, he has to allow you to deal with his things. God has to, uh, uh, um, first of all, uh, ponder your ways. God has to chop out some character and some traits for him to allow you to attain some certain dimensions of himself. God does not just give things because he is a giver. God does not just give things like he gave his son Jesus. God does not just give things because he is a God of abundance. God given things when it is due. God given things when a man is prepared to receive the things. Hallelujah. And therefore we need to understand that the reason for the mercy of God is for us to access God. The reason for the mercy of God is for us to experience God. There is no man in the face of the earth that has ever experienced God outside the boundaries of the mercies of God. You have to have an experience. You have to have, a, to have an experiential moment with the mercy of God for you to attend to the things of God. You cannot experience the full of the things of God if God has not been done in your life. And therefore, allow me to submit to all of us that the mercy of God is the way of access. The mercy of God is the reason why God said God overlooked the dimension of wickedness in every man's heart and in every man's life. And God overlooked the, 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 the nature of sin in a man. And God said, oh my, even if a man has become wicked, even if Jeremiah chapter number 17 says that the heart of a man is desperately wicked above all things, but I need to engage something. It is only me that can save my, uh, 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 that can save a man. It will take me for man to come to me. There is no man that can uh, enter into the things of God if God does not open a gate for you. And therefore God said, uh, because I am a God of great masses, I have to engage my masses and have compassion and show my loving kindness upon men that they may understand I am God. Because brother and sisters, anytime you talk about mercy, you must remember God. You can never separate God from masses. There is no man, there is, there, is, there is no single time that you can never talk about masses. 
and you fail to remember God. Every time you remember there is something called mercy. Hallelujah. Somebody let us shout mercy. Every time you remember there is mercy, you must remember there is God. Because there is no mercy without God. God is the giver of mercies. God is the God that helps men to become merciful to others. Mercy is a dimension of God. This, you can never separate mercies from God. Therefore, every dimension of mercy is originated from God. It is God that sheweth mercy. It is God that blesses a man with mercy. It is God that magnifies mercy in the life of a man. It is not about how much a man has labored in God. It is not about how much we are prayed in God. It is unto him that sheweth mercy to him to whomever he sheweth. It is him that decides that I decide to show mercy over your life because there is a dimension of me that I want you to test. I want you to test and see that I am God and I am good. But you cannot test and see that I am good if you have not encountered my mercy. It is until my mercy opens a door and a gate for your life that you will enter me. You will test me and, and come to realize I am sweeter than honey. Oh, test and see that the Lord is good. But now yes, if you will. Every dimension of God is attained from the place of the masses of God. Therefore, uh, I want us to realize every time we are going before God, every time we are entering into the throne of the grace of God, uh, 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 I want us to realize that we are still men. But uh, God desires to convert us from the nature of manhood. Because the nature of manhood is a distorted nature. It is a corrupt nature. It is a nature that is wicked. And therefore God cannot allow you into himself uh, while you still carry the nature of manhood. God has to convert you into something else. God has to translate you into a certain dimension of himself that when he looks at you he sees the righteousness of you. The righteousness of him in Christ Jesus. And God has to uh, release masses upon your life. And God will have to deliver you from the dungeon of sin. From the dungeon of wickedness. Lady, uh, brothers and sisters, I want us to realize the mercy of God is what makes the sinful nature in a man's life to submit to God. The, the, the masses of God has too much power that sin shall not rest on your mortal bodies. The mercy of God has too much power that this mind let it be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. You can never turn the things of God outside the masses of God. But I yes, was if you will. I want us to read from the book of Daniel chapter number 9. I want us to go together. Daniel chapter number 9 verses. Uh, verses number 18. Daniel chapter number 9. Verses number 18. And the Bible says, Oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and see our desolations and the city that is called by your name. For we do not present ourselves, our pleas, before you because of our righteousness, but because of your great masses. Hallelujah. Uh, 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 let me read from the Amplified Version. The Bible says, Oh my God, incline your ear and hear. Open your eyes and look at our desolations and the city which is called by your name. For we are not presenting our supplications before you because of our own merits and righteousness. Hallelujah. Let us say merits and righteousness. But because of your great mercy and your great compassion. But now, yes, was if it were. I want us to realize that Daniel is a man that walked and journeyed with God. And he came to a certain place and point in time and living. And he said that we do not come to you because of our merits. Merits, brothers and sisters, are the advantages that a man has. We are not coming to you because we have a voice. 
we are not coming to you because uh, 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 we have tongues and we have lips to speak. We are not coming to you because of our own merits and righteousness, Daniel said. We are not righteous enough to come to you, Daniel meant. But he said, but because of your great mercy and your great compassion, our brothers and sisters, allow me to submit to your life that until the mercy of God has allowed you into the court of God, until the mercy of God has allowed you into the gates of his, uh, of his holiness. Until the mercy of God has allowed you into the gates of his treasures. You can never attain any dimension of God. There are so many men that are languishing in so desperate situations. But I pray today that by the light of the mercy of God. That God will bring their minds to the understanding. That the mercy of God is able to save and is able to deliver. Sin cannot rest in the body of a man. Sin cannot have dominion in the life of a man because there is the mercy of God. It is the mercy that brought about the grace, the grace that appeared unto all men and bringing them to salvation. From the book of Titus chapter number 2 and verses number 11, we are saved by the mercies of God. It is not because of our merits. It is not because of our righteousness. But it is because of the mercy and the compassion of God. Hallelujah. Therefore, if God does not favor us with mercies, we are done. Every man that translates into excellence, every man that translates into, uh, 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 into the glory of God, must first of all, there, 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 there must be a moment whereby the man had an encounter with this dimension of God that we are calling the masses of God. Uh, 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 brothers and sisters, I want us to realize that uh, the mercy of God is what saves a man even without the knowledge of a man. There are times when a man uh, 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 is not aware about his destiny. There are times when a man is not aware that there are certain things that God wants to use him uh, in, in, the, in his life. There are times when a man is not aware that God wants to bless you. We have heard of testimonies and a man will come and say, I don't know how, but I know God has blessed my life. I don't know how I was a robber. I was a thief, but God transformed me to become a born again preacher. I don't know how, but it happened. There is a grace that came up to me and it translated me into another form. There is the masses of God uh, that invites the grace of God upon a man's life. For no man shall prevail by the arm of the flesh, says uh, the word of God from the book of First Samuel and chapter number 2, verses number verses number 9 that the Bible says and he will protect his faithful ones but the wicked will disappear in darkness uh, and then uh, the verse continues to say for no man shall prevail by the arm of the flesh praise the name of the Lord the Bible says that by the strength of a man by the ability of a man alone man cannot prevail Praise the name of the Lord. It simply means that if you have to prevail in God, God has to apply something that will break the power of the arm of the flesh. God has to apply something that will paralyze your flesh. That when you enter to him, God looks at you and does not see sin, but he sees the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. It is by the mercy of God that, uh, that God gave his only begotten son. And the Bible says that Jesus came full of grace and full of truth. He came uh, that all men shall understand that there is something that is called the grace. And there is something that is called the truth. And the Bible says that the truth shall set you free when you shall know it. I want us to realize the beginning and the, and the foundation of every move of God. The move of God in a generation is hosted by divine mercy. The move of God in a certain place is first of all are welcomed. And that's by the mercy of God. It is not unto him that we live. It is not unto us that prayeth. It is not about intercession. It is about provoking and invoking the masses of God. And I stand here by the grace 
of our man of God, Pastor Ando Motana. I agree to that grace and by the power of the Holy Ghost, I decree that because of the greatness of the mercy of God, Westlands will see a light again. It doesn't matter the darkness that has prevailed for years, for times and for seasons. And it doesn't matter the period of the dominion of Satan in Westlands. But I stand here by the grace of, of the living God. And I decree that Westlands will come to the light. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah. That behold them that walk in darkness have seen a great light. Have seen a glorious light. It is by the mercy of God. Darkness cannot live the life of a man. If the mercy of God does not invade and breaks the power of darkness. It is the mercy that introduces the power to break wickedness. The power of the blood. Ladies and gentlemen, when you dissect the blood of Jesus, one of the things you shall find is mercy. It is because of the mercy that the blood of Jesus is able to save you from every wickedness. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we blessed? The Bible says in the book of Lamentation, chapter number 3, verses number 23, that great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin. Somebody shout begin. Hallelujah. Great is the faithfulness of God. Uh, Lamentations 3, 23. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is your faithfulness. Hallelujah. It is, it is masses that begin. Hallelujah. Faithfulness is a dimension of God. Just like God is a just God. We have certain dimensions of God. We have the greatness of God. It is a dimension of God. By which he executes himself. And we have justice. It is a dimension of God. By which he executes his abilities. But another dimension of God is faithfulness. Now God is faithful uh, to his masses. God is faithful uh, uh, when it comes to uh, releasing his masses. And the Bible says that the masses of God are new every morning. It is, it is, it is masses that manifest the faithfulness of God. One of the ways that you want to prove that God is a faithful God is because today morning you are not as you were yesterday. You have fresh masses upon your head. You are not as you were last month. They are fresh masses. You are renewed. Even going to sleep, retiring to bed. And waking up early in the morning, brothers and sisters, it is not a coincidence, it is not a science. I submit to us the mercy, that the mercy is the mystery that governs the realm of men. If I thought the masses have not located the realm of men, man is darkened. A man will only exist and live and walk in darkness. It is by the masses of God that someone is viewing from online platform and our God is delivering you from a certain situation. It is by the mercy of God. The mercy of God is getting activated wherever that you are, wherever you are seated, at the comfort of your coach or wherever that you are seated. The mercy of God is getting activated. We cannot enter into a service of invoking divine masses. And your life returns the same. Something has to shift in your life. Therefore, uh, it is so much painful that uh, men that have never understood that God is a faithful God uh, have not yet come to the knowledge that God has mercies. Wanaeswasifiwe. What do I mean by this? If you do not understand there is a dimension of God called masses, you, will, you, may, you may never ever be able to acknowledge God. And I believe that is why the Holy Spirit wants us to understand that there is mercy. Why? Because the dimension of God that you do not understand, you cannot experience it. Praise the name of the Lord. 
What you do not know about God, if you have never understood that God is a healer, your faith can never rise to the place of provoking the healing power of the living God. And therefore, God wants men to understand, I am God and I have mercies. Is there anything that is too hard for me to do? There is nothing that God cannot be able to do. Jesus said, everything shall be possible to everyone that believes. Jesus was not just talking about uh, believing anything. Jesus was talking about believing God and understanding that is a dimension of God, God the mercies of God. That even when you don't deserve something, you can end up having it. Even when you didn't deserve it, even when you didn't think that you need it, God will deliver it to you because he is a God of great mercies. But now yes, what's we? And therefore, we are preserved and we are renewed by this dimension of God. We are calling the masses of God. But now, yes, what's we? Uh, every time that a man misses out on understanding the realities of God, that God is real, even when it comes to his masses, men will end up missing out on God. Not because God has hidden himself. God can never hide himself from a man. Uh, 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 help me please uh, put, um, mm, uh, read this verse from the book of Psalms I think chapter number 46 the Bible says that he is a ever present help in the time of need and I want to bring every one of us to the light that the God that we are serving the God I am talking about today morning the God that have been given this opportunity to give uh, 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 to to to, uh, to, to to, to explain concerning him is a God that is a very present and well proved help in trouble. You can never miss out on God when you need him. But there are times when men have entered trouble and men have not been able to experience the dimension of God that paralyzes trouble. I want you to understand that brothers and sisters by the power of the Holy Ghost today you are beginning to understand that this mercy that when you enter trouble you look at trouble and laugh at trouble when you remember there is mercy that even if by your own strength you cannot prevail there is God that is merciful and David cried and said that I am weak but oh God you are merciful it is only the mercies of God that can save a weak man it is only the mercies of God that can give strength to dead bones it is only the masses of God that can save a man that is dead in his wickedness. It is only the masses of God that can invade your territories when Satan coming against you like a flood. The Bible says that the Spirit of God shall lift a standard. The Bible does not say when you pray the Spirit. The Bible says when the enemy comes against you like a flood, the Spirit of God will lift a standard. The man has not prayed. The spirit has not requested you to pray. But he will lift a standard. It did, it did not just come because he lacked anywhere else to go. He came. Why? Because the masses of God have triggered him to invade your circumstances. Praise the name of the Lord. Somebody shout, I am not left alone. Bwana Yeshua Sifiwe. The Bible says in the book of Psalms chapter number uh, 130, a verse that we just read here, verses number 3. The Bible says, if you, Lord, should keep account and treat us according to our sins. And the psalmist said that, oh God, who could stand? That if God will treat us on the account of our wickedness. Who is that man that can stand? If God does not remember mercy every time I say, Father, I come to you as a son. If God does not remember mercy, I, I cannot be able to stand before him. I cannot, I cannot have my words are not are powerful enough to express my request before God. There are times when every time we go before God, before your voice is heard, the mercy of God has spoken on your behalf. 
Every time that a man has entered into the throne of his grace, we are getting there. The, uh, uh, I want us to understand that the mercy of God has spoken on behalf of the man. Praise the name of the Lord. That is why the Bible says that his masses begin afresh each morning. Before a man has woken up, masses have invaded the, man of the, uh, the, man, the, the, the life of the man. Simply because a man will need masses for the man to become effective. A man will need the masses of God. Why? Because by the arm of his flesh, he cannot prevail. There are certain things. And the Bible says when you read from the book of Psalms 101. That morning by morning, the Lord will slay the wicked in the land. I want you to understand that we are living in dark days. There are demons that are paraded and invaded the days of the living of a man. It will take the masses of God. To paralyze the wicked in the land. For men to prevail upon the face of the earth. It will take the masses of God. For God to paralyze. Even the things and the strong men. That have invaded this land. Even before we lift up uh, the sound of our prayer. It will take the masses of God. To speak on our behalf. And introduce us into certain portals. In the realm of the spirit. There is no man that can prevail by himself. It takes the masses of God. The Bible says, uh, please help me over, the, over the, 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 the projector. The Bible says in the book of uh, James chapter number 2, verses number 3. That mercy exalts victoriously over judgment. Praise the name of the Lord. When a man is entitled to judgment, it is only the mercy of God that can save the man. When a man is walking, and the Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So the pension of every man that is walking in certain sin, it is death. And therefore, sin has led us to the place of judgment. And the judgment of sin is death. But now I want us to understand that the mercy of God is the reason whereby when sin is leading you to death, masses invade your life. And mercy, the Bible says, it triumphs. Hallelujah. Mercy, it exalts victoriously above judgment. How many times have men sinned against God? But how many times has God delivered men? There are men that have walked, have, have slept in, in beds of immorality, and yet God will accept them to himself back once again. It is a place in God. It is a dimension of God that even Satan cannot deny. That Satan understands that as long as the platform for my operation in the life of a man is seen, but I fear masses. When God appears and invades the territories of the enemies, of, 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 of the, the, the devils that have troubled your life, and he comes against uh, uh, and invades them and introduces himself as I am a God of mercy. Satan says, I draw back. Why? Because Satan fears the mercy of God. One of the dimensions in God that the devil can never uh, 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 argue about, it is the mercies of God. He is God just by himself. There is no place for argument. Praise the name of the Lord. Therefore, when we say you are God from beginning to the end, there is no place for argument. You are God by yourself. We are incorporating the mercy of God. 
We are telling God we understand their dimensions of you that no man can resist and no devil can resist. Even Satan cannot resist the dimension of mercy. That when God introduces himself as a God of mercy, there is no dimension he cannot lift even a wicked man. There is a man right now as I'm, uh, as I'm speaking this, a man that is walking in immorality is left in a, bond, in a bed of immorality right now. But as as I speak, the mercy of God is invading the life of the man. Hallelujah. Why? Because when mercy speak on behalf of the man, Satan is silenced. Whatever foundation that has bounded the life of a man, it is only silent in the place of the God of mercies. Vigilance executed against the enemies of a man. Vigilance is first of all provoked from the platform of the masses of God. It is because God is merciful that God will avenge for you. It is because God is merciful that God will fight back that which is fighting you. It is because God is merciful that God will lift up your life. And the Bible says that he lifts the poor from the dust. And he makes them to sit with kings. Why? Because there is a dimension in himself that even poverty can never deny. Hallelujah. Therefore, uh, God does not manifest his wonders in the life of a man. Simply because it is a guarantee for God to show himself. It is not a guarantee that a man, a sick man will enter this service. And leave this service totally healed. It is not a guarantee. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. It is never a guarantee. That you can go before God and you cry to God. Even the whole night. And God by morning. God has shifted your life. To a dimension you didn't ever imagine. It is not a guarantee. It is a mercy. Of God. It is by the mercy of God. That you are a blessed man. That you are a blessed lady. It is by the mercy of God. That you will become better than anybody in your family. It is by the mercy of God that you will have finances when men are lacking. It is by the mercy of God that you will have that which you didn't even pray about. It just landed on you without your consent. It is by the mercies of God. And therefore every aspect of God that has to be revealed in a man's life. It begins from the greatness and the surety of his masses. In the book of Psalms chapter number 6, verses number 2, the psalmist cried out and said, Have mercy upon me, O God. Hallelujah. Somebody shout, have mercy upon me. And he said, and be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am weak. And then he said, oh Lord, heal my bones. For my, heal me for my bones are troubled. The psalmist understood. That even before I tell God I am sick and my bones are troubled. I will need God to remember his mercies. I am not guaranteed healing every time I am sick. I am not guaranteed greatness when I am low. I am not guaranteed deliverance when I'm, an, I'm under pressure. It will take God to remember masses before my deliverance comes. It will take God to remember uh, 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 his masses before I am healed. And therefore, every time, ladies and gentlemen, that we go before God and we tell God I come to you because I have understood you are a God that is great in masses. God says, oh yes, my son, 
I am here. Now you have known me. Now you are ready to experience me. A man can never experience a dimension of God that the man has not understood the patterns of hosting the same dimension of God. You will need to know that there is masses and you will need to know that God remembers mercy before he, 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 he manifests. You will need to understand that even before miracles can happen, it will take the mercy of God. I, I pray for someone uh, 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 that is seated under the sound of my voice that the mercy of God will cause God to move into your life and every pathetic situation and every confusion and that which has created doubt and unbelief in your life shall be slain and laid to rest by the mercy of God. Let the mercies of God manifest in your life today that your life shall not remain the same again. There is someone that is dead in drunkenness. But I pray for mercy. By the God that sheweth mercy. May the drunkenness foundation be broken. In the name of Jesus. I pray unto the God. The God of great mercies. Over this land I raise my voice. In the name of Jesus. And I pray her. By the mercies of the living God. Let the wave of darkness. That has covered the land of Westlands. Be taken away in the name of Jesus. And every blanket of iniquity that defies immorality, that defies occultism, that defies devil worship, that defies prostitution. Let the blanket be taken away and the veil shall be torn down. Why? Because the mercy began in the name of Jesus. I want you to realize it has taken the mercy of God for every man to serve and to excel. In the purpose by which God has called him. Remember, a man can never excel if the man misses out on his purpose. If I do not walk in my purpose, I can never be said, it can never be said of me. That I excel, that I succeeded. Excellence is tested by the value of your purpose. Success is defined by your purpose. Your purpose will call you successful. Your purpose will speak on your behalf that indeed this man has excelled. This man is ready for his next level. It is as you journey with God. In the, in the dimension, in the tracks of your purpose. That your purpose comes to a point in time. And your purpose is able to, de uh, to define and to speak on your behalf. Before God that you are ready for your shifting. You are ready for your miracle. You are ready for your next level. And the purpose of God upon a man's life is laid. In the destiny of God upon a man's life. Destinies don't just rise. Destinies don't just shift. In the absence of the masses of God. The destiny. I call it the womb of life. The womb of life cannot give birth. To excellence. If the mercy of God does not attract excellence. In God. Your destiny can never be saved as a destiny. That excelled in God. If the mercy of God missed out on your life. It will take mercy for your destiny to excel. The Bible says, now I want us to understand there is another dimension of the masses of God. That I want us to understand. We are almost uh, coming to the end. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, please uh, give me over the. The Bible says in the book of Genesis chapter number 19, verses number 19. That a uh, Lord was speaking to the angels, and Lord was saying, that behold now your servant has found. Yes, let me read from here, from the Amplified Version. And the Bible says, please listen, your servant has found favor in your sight, and you have magnified your loving kindness or your mercies to me by saving my life. Hallelujah. But I cannot escape to the mountains, because the disaster will overtake me and I will be killed. Now, I want us to understand two dimensions of mercy here, of the mercy of God here. That by, 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 
by, by the angels of the living God, the angels that were sent to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, but by them saving the life of Lot and his family. That was a dimension of the mercy. But listen, the Bible says, and you have magnified your mercy to me by saving my life. It is a blessing, God, that his mercies uh, uh, cease to become normal mercies. It is not just about the mercies that are fresh every morning. And God enters you into a certain realm of himself and he tells you, son and my daughter, you have come to the place whereby I choose the men uh, that have found favor in my sight. And I magnify my mercy. Meaning, Yakwamba, there were mercies that were already existing in your life. But God is shifting them times two. Uh, there comes a point in time where God magnifies mercy. And this is the point that we call that the, 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 there is a shifter. There is a turnaround in the life of a man. When God magnifies his mercies upon the life of a man, the man ceases to become common. The man steps out of ordinariness and God begins to shift the life of the man. And therefore we need to understand there is a dimension in God that God will have to magnify his masses. There are things that don't just happen in the life of a man because the masses of God are fresh in the life of a man in the morning. There are things that will only happen in a man's life. Why? Because God has magnified his masses. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. The Bible says, and therefore, before even we read the next text, I want us to understand that it is an ability in God. It is a place. It is a dimension in God. That all men do not just walk in the same dimension of masses. All men do not just operate in the same level of masses. There are greater dimensions of mercy that qualify men for greater things in God. There are greater dimensions of the mercy of God. That when that dimension steps into your life, you step into another dimension of your life. There is a dimension of the mercy of God that is not common to everyone. That is uncommon. Uncommon mercies usher men into uncommon dimensions in God. Uncommon mercies usher men into uncommon manifestations in God. Uncommon mercies in God are usher men into uncommon dimension of favor in the life of a man. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you this light. That if at all the mercy of God is still common in your life, then you will walk in common favor. If at all the mercy of God is still common in your life, you will walk in common dimensions of grace. But there are greater graces. There are greater dimensions of favor. There are advanced levels of wisdom that every man has not yet attained. But they are them that God has chosen. And they have found favor in him. And God has allowed them and has ushered them into other unusual dimensions in himself. Remember God is too much. And no man has ever exhausted God. But at least there is a dimension you can journey in God. Until the nations look at you and say that indeed you are a man that sought God and found him. And you walked in, and you walked with him. And you have translated and handed over the mantle of God upon our generation. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you uh, that uh, today uh, God is about to shift his masses upon our lives to a new dimension. There is a greater eye of mercy that God is about to project uh, in your life that when God looks at you, God will begin uh, to usher you into the realm of wonders. Why? Because the mercy of God will begin to testify about you and will begin to qualify you uh, for the dimensions of wonder. There is no man that can walk in wonders when the man is walking in common dimensions of mercy. There is no man that can walk in miracles if the man is still walking in the dimension of the masses that were fresh. There are greater dimensions in God. God is a journey and if you have to attain God, you must agree to step into the journey and you walk with God. Why? Because 
It is God that defines every dimension that a man has to experience in him. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. The Bible says in the book of Exodus chapter number 3, 33, verses number 17. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing uh, also that you have asked, for you have found favor, loving kindness, and mercy in my sight. And I know you, uh, and I know you personally and by your name. Bwana Sifiwe. Praise the name of the Lord. The Bible says, the Lord said unto Moses, I will also do this thing that you have asked. For you have found favor that is loving kindness and mercy in my sight. And I have known you personally.